Good afternoon, you way bastards, and welcome back to Warthador with Koala. And welcome to one of the greatest clutches that I've ever seen. Now, this match you're about to see was played actually last patch, so the new graphics effects, new vehicles, yeah, don't expect to see any of them here. There will be no Stratzfarn 103s here today. Bloody cheese wedge. And I'll be totally honest with you here, right now, this is not going to be the highest kill game you've ever seen. In fact, it wouldn't even be the highest kill game on the channel. But I absolutely had to put this match out on YouTube, because even though I only scored around half my own personal best in number of kills, this was without a doubt the best match of War Thunder I've ever played. And I think you'll be able to see why. And we're already in the engagement, that's a fairly damaging shot in a Type 75 self-propelled artillery of the Japanese self-defense force. He sure is lucky to still be alive. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> Taken out by an ATGM from a Rakitin Jagdpanzer. So to begin this match, we're obviously in the Soviet T-54, a 7.7 .7 first generation main battle tank on the Tunisia map. And we're on a full down tier, it's a 6-7 seven to 7-7 seven seven match. It's also a single capture point game with the Alpha Zone, which my team has just captured, at the west of the map, in the ravine and on the bridge. So, well, pay attention to this guy here. That's a BMP-1 of the German Democratic Republic who is flanking all the way around the map to come at the enemy from the east. Fitting, as it's East German, while the Leopard 1s engage the western flank here around the capture point. Now, with the enemy all bunched up in the rocks to the north of A, I've taken the opportunity to come down into the valley as early as possible. There's an M48 pattern my teammate in the Panther actually pointed out on the map, warning me about, before he unfortunately got taken out by a Conqueror. Unfortunate bounce there, and I can't really retreat very far without meeting the same fate as the Panther here. Survived the return shot from the pattern, now we're locked in place. My teammate should have my sign protected though, so I wait for the reload before activating fire suppression equipment. No, not fire prevention equipment, Gaijin, you don't generally put out fires that have already started. <laughs> there we go, fires out, guns at the ready, just waiting for this M48 to put on his brave pants. Is he coming? We're only likely to get one shot, so I'll wait for an angle I know I will penetrate, and there we go, right into the M48's lower gun mantlet. There's our first kill. Now, we've already lost one crew member, along with the engine being taken out. But it's very important that I take this hill now instead of pushing back into the capture point. See, one problem that befalls a lot of Russian tanks on a map like this is their poor gun depression, which means that if you try to advance at the wrong time, on your way up the hill on the other side, the enemy will be ready and waiting for you, and I'll plant one into you before you can crest the top of the hill and get your gun down, which is what happened in my initial engagement with the pattern. If you don't advance soon enough, on the other hand, and the enemy makes it down into the valley, then you lose all ability to engage them from any sort of cover. Now, I was just making sure, while I'm repairing anyway, that our team has a tank, the Char 25T, the Batcha, down in the valley, and he's protected by the towers of the bridge. Unfortunately, because he's between the first two towers, though, he's not actually in the capture point, which has allowed the enemy to reset it to neutral. And what that means is that we are going to have to prioritize going back in there from the north side to recapture A, instead of being able to press further into enemy territory and solidify our positions from the side here. And there are aircraft in play, one of which is the friendly ME410, which has just crashed, but the other is a turboprop, which means it can only be either a British Wyvern or American Skyshark, so that's definitely enemy, and both of those things come armed to the teeth of a ground attack. As two of our teammates just found out. <laughs> uh oh. I did spot one enemy, looked like an American tank moving into the lower west side of the cap, and our friend of the German BMP-1, still not having seen a soul on his epic flanking manoeuvre, is finally coming back into play, so at least we know we're safe from flanking attacks or he would have met them already. And we should start seeing some support from him, which is great news for us for- Oh no. Oh, fantastic strike from the enemy A2D Skyshark right there. Absolutely gorgeous bombing run. But the poor bastard in the BMP. <laughs> and now we are completely alone on the enemy side of the map, locked down in a ravine. 
on a 50 second repair for a single track. That just seems a wee bit excessive. Now, obviously the Sky Sharks bombing run would have spotted me, and if any of the enemy team were paying any attention to their minimaps, they'd know that three enemies were spotted and only two were taken out. So I have to assume they know I'm here, and they could literally be coming from any direction without the BMP to back me up on one side, and with the capture zone in enemy hands. Luckily enough, there's the M48 came from the enemy side of the map, and with a beautiful shot right into the cupola. <laughs> that slaps me on the knee. Unfortunately, that is going to be the last kill I achieve in the T-54. As we're moving a, a wee bit further up, this position is a bit too compromised for me right now. And oh dear, that is very bad news. That's a T-95, the Doom Turtle. There is literally nothing I can do to him from the front, besides maybe take out his cannon barrel and... Not to worry, there's a Japanese Type 75 howitzer ready to take us out anyway. So write down your answers in the comments, who will Koala kill? The correct answer is... Neither! <laughs> and unfortunately, our reign in the T-54 has ended. But it's not to worry, we have a decent lineup and plenty of spawn points. Although, looking at the map, is there any wonder by this point sitting at my PC that, well... I'd given up on this match. In fact, the enemy team is even spawn camping us right now, although you can't see that on the minimap. So I went to grab a bite to eat and make myself a cup of tea, left my Object 120 sitting by the spawn, figuring this match was a guaranteed loss. And when I did come back two minutes later, thinking I could nab maybe one easy kill, I ended up just dying to a conqueror anyway. So we'll skip over that bit. I have a reputation to maintain, of course. <laughs> and now it's time for the star of today's video, the Bias 6. <laughs> yeah, this thing isn't so much bias anymore, is it? Over the last two years since I remember buying it, it's lost 100mm of turret armour, 50mm of hull armour, and been raised in battle rating, along with having a bunch of newfangled opponents to fight that just lol pen it from any angle, and dealing with the shell penetration rebalance that happened early to mid last year. But it's still a surprisingly versatile heavy tank, just perhaps not as horrifically and hilariously broken as it once was. First thing we do, end that bloody conqueror. And now we're racing against the clock, because... Do you see how many tickets we have left? Yet, yeah, not many, and they're trickling down by the second. The enemy team, on the other hand, has probably four-fifths of theirs remaining, and we only have one teammate anywhere near the capture point who's pinned down by enemy tanks and can't move out without risking his own death. And every death sets us back another 100 tickets. Fortunately for us though, the IS-6 is quite a nimble heavy tank, and here we are back at the top of the ravine, face to face with yet another Type 75. Now I'm going to pause it right here. The Type 75 is definitely ready to engage me. That SPG has a 10 second drum fed autoloader, even though the game will tell you it has 3 loaders, and we didn't see him marked on the map which means he's not been shot at to be damaged, nor have we seen him fire at all recently. All he has to do here to win the match for his team is stop me in my tracks. Literally, if he does that, there is no way any of my team can get into the cap in time to prevent the tickets bleeding out for our team. But of course, as Jingles would say, sometimes it's not enough to win, you just have to try to win harder. See, if the Type 75 were to shoot me on the front plate, he'd immobilise me, no doubt. In fact, likely as not, he'd take out both of my tracks and even be able to survive, because I wouldn't be able to push up and kill him before the match naturally ended. But he wouldn't get a kill for it either. To do that, he needs a perfect shot, directly under my gun into the shot trap. I, on the other hand, don't have the luxury of that. It's now or never. Whoever gets this shot off will decide the outcome of the match. Use the rocks, one chance. Oh no, that was beautiful. <laughs> Still, there's only seconds left for me to get inside that capture point, so throwing caution to the wind once again, it's a race down the hill, hoping to Gaijilla that none of their team happens to be in the camp already. There are two enemies over there, no time to aim at them now, but luckily neither of them were in the cat. Oof, pounce that shell, and we managed to arrest the ticket bleed. With 210 tickets left. That's just an M16, we can easily kill him with the commander's machine gun, and then BOOM! Plant a 122mm right into the top of the M46 pattern. 
The fuse on this 122mm round seems to arm almost instantly, and with so much explosive mass. When this round enters any tank that isn't a German heavy, it dies. <laughs> but we're not out of the woods just yet. We, if we want to win this game, are going to have to hold this capture point for the next about 6 to 8 minutes without losing any more than two vehicles. The friendly Tiger II is currently dealing with an M56 Scorpion up on the ridge to the south. I'm going to take out this T114, that should allow the Tiger II the freedom to move out, but the French A35B on our team, in true big brain fashion, just planted his aircraft into the ground. Oh boy, I could have throttled them just there. <laughs> And the Kugelblitz on that team just blundered around a rock and got deleted by a Centurion. So right now my knuckles are white and my heart is pounding at this point just at the thought that maybe we could bring this one around. I mean if any of you lads have been through streets this die on a video game before you'll know just how much it puts you on the edge of your seat. And anyone who says, it's only a game, well I'm not responsible for your injuries. <laughs> Ten tickets left and the enemy when i captured the zone in the first place had over 12,000. there's the tiger 2 we're gonna have to stick to each other if we want to nab a win out of this one because each of us assuming that the tiger 2 has lost his loader he did take a bunch of hits earlier so i can almost guarantee he's a crew member down each of us is going to have more than a 15 second reload now we have one friendly jet watching the skies let's hope he's a decent pilot one friendly light tank, I can't remember if that's the player who was in the A-35 or the Kugelblitz. The Tiger II has just marked an enemy light tank up on the north side of the ravine behind the wreckage of the T-114. And there's definitely an American heavy tank, the T-34, up on top of the hill to the right. But apparently there is at least one more enemy, a medium tank, behind me. I don't know if you saw, but he just got marked on the map. There's the T-34, couldn't find the weak spot through the bushes, and I stepped on reverse just as I pulled the trigger anyway, so that one just shattered on the mantlet. So we have only one tank with a round loaded right now, and three enemies surrounding us. If any of these three had had the slightest level of coordination, I can tell you with absolute certainty we would have been goners, and this match would never have made it to YouTube. But of course all three of them sat back in cover saying, well, are you gonna go first? I'm not gonna go first. Don't you know that's an IS-6 and a King Tiger down there? <laughs> that allowed me to reload a shot to fire at the M41 Walker Bulldog. There's an M46 Patton that's just come down into the ravine with us. He's the other side of this bridge tower. That was around reloaded. No time to think as the M46 comes around the corner completely oblivious, although how, I have no idea. Plant one into him, and now the friendly Batchat from the river to the east is offering his own support and has taken out the Centurion who's atop the bridge. Alright, I suppose he's made up for crashing his aircraft earlier. <laughs> Once again, the potential window the enemy team had to rush us while our most powerful tank is on a long reload has been squandered by the team who wanted to save their crews for the next battle. But I've got to be very careful here. We still have two enemy teammates in play, the M41 Walker Bulldog and the T-34. And a combination of those two could be very, very powerful right now. Now the M41 was just marked up on top of us and he's just been taken out by the Char-25 once again. But the T-34, the only remaining enemy tank, is going to be rejoined very soon and neither myself nor the King Tiger can do much to prevent him from shooting at the batch at from down here. So why he's just sitting up there doing nothing, I fail to understand. Perhaps he's busy applying for a parliamentary position in Australia. No time to think however as an M18 Hellcat of all things bounces a shot off my rear. Unfortunately I whiffed that return shot into his front end but I could use the heavy machine gun once again to finish him off quite easily. And the T-34 who finally decided to adventure down the hill unfortunately fluffed the shot bouncing it off my turret. And now it's all over. Too little, too late from the American heavy tank, and even though we are stuck repairing and the T-34 is going to make one final attempt to push in, he hasn't had time to reload, so there's nothing he can do anyway. Lads and lasses, with 10 points remaining and heavily outnumbered by the enemy team, that's the game. <laughs> 
I don't think I've ever seen a more perfect epitome of a team coming back to claim victory from the jaws of defeat. I mean, we were down by over 12,000 points at the halfway point, stuck on 10 for a good couple of minutes. But somehow, with a wee bit of teamwork between random players on our side and a complete lack of it from the enemy team who squandered multiple opportunities to secure the win, we ended up being the ones to have them on the ropes, even despite being down still a few thousand points right up until the end. I didn't even get the chance to say it, but one way I almost lost this for our team was by showing the IS-6's big butt out the back of the bridge tower I'd been clinging to for cover. If the M46 had known I was there, he'd have lit me on fire and been able to burn me down without there being anything I could do about it, and I would have lost this game for our team. Just one of the many dangers of these Soviet heavies. Unfortunately, well, very fortunately for us, the enemy team was obviously very complacent until right near the end of the match, when they all started panicking instead. The M46 paid no attention to his miniman and really failed his team, as did the M18, although without APCR, which he probably didn't even think to bother loading anyway, I don't think there was anything he could have really done to me. Or was it the T-34 who failed to advance down the hill while I was reloading after failing to penetrate his mantlet? Or before that when the Type 75, hungry for another kill rather than just securing a win, allowed me the chance to make it into the capture zone in the first place, and unknowingly put his team into the embarrassing position of losing a match against inferior numbers despite a 12,000 point lead. Props to the King Tiger and Batchat players on this team, you guys were fantastic, but what's interesting is that if you watch this video all the way through and look at all the kill feed messages, and even during the segment I cut out, I looked back through, and while our team had T-54s and Leopard 1s, Object 120s, and even a Rakitin Jagdpanzer 2, which only recently got down-tiered, the enemy team did not have a single vehicle above battle rating 7.3. M48 Patterns, Conquerors and Centurion Mark 10s, so many Type 75s, there must have been a squadron of them or something. But no M60s, no STB1s, no M103s or F84 Thunderjets, not a single 7.7 .7 vehicle to be found on the enemy team. Regardless of how incredible it is that our team were even capable of almost losing by over 12,000 points with such an unfair advantage, that should never be able to happen. Gaijin, fix your shit. Oh come on now, I can't go a whole worth of the video without blaming something on the devs. <laughs> and with that, I hope you lads have enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did. We're almost at 50,000 subs now. Come follow me on Twitter and Twitch, join the Discord and check out Patreon or hit the join button here on YouTube if you wish to support the channel further. Thank you lads so much for watching, have a lovely good day, and always remember, keep your bagpipes in one hand, whiskey in the other, keep your kilt on, and I'll catch you next time. I say a wee thank you to these lads for supporting me on Patreon. Rosekill, Metallic Green, Church, Crescent, Captain Fibar, The Britlander, Seagull Nuts, DF261, Latvian Wolf, Gisli Gadarsen, and Dark Recon, you lads are bro. Want to join them? Come check out Patreon at the link in the description below.